Welcome to Coping Diary number 16. Thanks for the feedback on CD15, Far Lost, and thanks for not being angry about how totally overwhelming you are to an Earth girl learning how to cope. Quick combination recap and shout out to Martell Network for offering me an endorsement deal for exclusively hosting the Coping Diaries. My, how alien this place is, and yet, how incredibly like home. What do you guys think? Should I take the Martell money? I don't know. I'm still thinking about it, and I'll get back to them soon. But I really appreciated the Martell Lou you sent me with the proposal. Network access ain't cheap anywhere, and that goes double for Far Lost. Especially now I'm connecting, uh, wirelessly, and the least I could do is tell people about your offer. If you're new to the show, and you just recently found me on your network of choice, hi, uh, my name is Serena Chan. Uh, I'm human, obviously. I arrived on the Bright Spear and made it safely to the belt thanks to all the nice aliens. Yeah, <laughs> not used to saying aliens at all, not yet. Well, it's only been a couple weeks since I arrived at that pop-up resettlement colony, so a little disorientation is to be... <laughs> Hell, I'll be honest. Every time I wake up, I think I'm back in my bunk on the spear, waking up late for duty. It comes back pretty quick. Aliens, dragons, claws, shrapnel, death. Far lost. Right. Not complaining, guys. Being alive beats the alternative. And I'll go out on a limb and say the belters who took me in treated me better than my species treats most of our own refugees back home. Anywho, no more belter camp for me. I am officially on the move. I'm recording this edition of The Coping Diary from the supply hauler Dizzy Chick, whose crew has sponsored me. Yes, that's right. Serena is once again gainfully employed. The Dizzy is somewhere in the winter belt. I can't keep it straight yet. And even if I could, it's kind of a secret. <laughs> Pirates and all, sorry. The ship's got a regular run ferrying water, stores, and food supplies to a bunch of regular customers, and we've also got some other Bright Spear survivors on board to drop at outposts and ships who have sponsored them. There's two Spear officers and three Spear crew on the Dizzy right now, you know, besides me. I'm going to miss them when they're gone, no lie, but we've traded hugs and tears and contact info already. It's been good. And I am ever so grateful to Tomaris the Manta, Dana, a human who arrived on the Betty McKenna, and her hide symbiote, Mercier. The three of them co-own the Dizzy, and I literally owe the clothes on my back and the roof over my head to them. Not to mention a job on a ship. I get to keep moving, see more of Far Lost before I settle down. Speaking of, uh, if you're on the video feed, check out these new threads. My first gig not wearing a Chinese Navy uniform since getting out of college. Sure, the jumpsuit's a little threadbare, but Taobao and Amazon don't really deliver around here. The ship is clean, I get to teach as much as I get to learn, and it feels good not to be surrounded by hundreds of shell-shocked refugees, of which I fully admit I am one. It's a change, but Tom, Dana, and Mercy are nice people. And hey, I'm not Dragon Kibble, right? If you've been listening to my CDs for a while, you've heard me tear up and tell and retell the tale of how Bright Spear, the dauntless flagship, and only ship, of the Chinese Space Navy arrived here to be promptly chewed apart by the Godzilla-sized vacuum-surfing reptiles you know and fear. And you don't need to hear it again. I'm still getting used to the fact that merely arriving and surviving has made my fellow Spear crew and I objects of pretty intense interest here. Intense. That's a good word for what the last month has been. But I'm doing like it says in the title. Coping. Coping the best I can after finding out my last mission for the Navy, China's last mission having a Navy, was a one-way trip. I miss my mom. I miss my little pup, Katja. I miss McDonald's. Oh, I hella miss KFC. Yeah, I miss pretty much everything else on Earth. So, what better way for a native English speaker, 
Thanks Mom, Thanks U of I Urbana, with a few years video blogging on Weibo under her belt, to cope, then ta-da! If Far Lost didn't have the internet or something close enough for my tiny human brain to comprehend, I would not have made it this far. What's that, new viewer in the back? How far have I made it, you ask? Don't worry, regulars, I'll make this quick, but a Martel offer to host your show brings a lot of new streams and downloads, let me tell you. Well, I know dragons are big, mean, organized, and that they suck. Okay, they more than suck. They're evil. Like Hitler and white nationalists evil. Control and subjugate every other species in far lost evil. Then fight rival dragon clans, often to the death, in a kind of game of scales scoff death match. That kind of evil. I know that every time some brilliant sentient tries to go faster or cheat their way around the speed of light, there's a very big explosion wherever they were, and they end up here. What else have I learned? I know Manta are crazy about baseball, which is weird considering they're basically helium-filled stingrays. They've got no legs. How do they swing a bat? Is that racist or? <sighs> Quick reminder, folks. Thanks for not being angry about how totally overwhelming you are to an Earth girl learning how to cope. I know Martel Network was founded by a human. I know Airy Network was founded by a tree. I know little trees hitchhike all over Far Lost. I know they love to fight. They look like tiny ants or farmers' field scarecrows, and that's honestly a little freaky. I also know they grow up into living computers that each put their processing power of bright spear, along with half of mainland China, to shame. Oh. And I know that a human tweaked Arinet with an encryption algorithm the scaly buggers still haven't cracked. I also know humans are, I think, the only ones dumb enough to have arrived in Far Lost three times. Thrice, I say. Well, as the saying goes, if at first you don't succeed, uh, explode some more billion-dollar spacecraft in a race to be the first to go faster than light and prove yours is bigger than theirs. What else? Uh, I think I've nailed down the names of all the races, and no, you don't need to hear that. I know a lot of the famous dragon clan battles. I know there's a thriving underground black market internet in the Casty Sky cities. Ooh, speaking of which, a shout out to Jallo the Jerd from Obel Sky City. I've never talked with a sentient colony of insects before. Is it true you guys love Earth, honey? And isn't that like cannibalism? Ooh, and I love whispers. How cool is a stealth router system that keeps encrypted network access flowing in the Winter Belt to a bunch of anonymous ships and habitats without giving away their locations or populations or any other secret intel dragons could use to find them and steal their lunch money and, you know, enslave them? Remember before, uh, I kind of said humans were dumb for trying to go faster than light, what, three, maybe even four times now? For failing to learn the lesson that it's a gross waste of resources to keep trying something that results in exploding and dying and whatnot. But so what? So what if us humans like to slam our heads against the wall sometimes, a lot of the time? I think what's more important is something that humans get right. Over half the people, sorry, the sentients, that risked their lives to save mine and my friends on the Bright Spear, you guessed it, they were human. <laughs> Humans will always take the dirty jobs, the one-way missions, the one-in-a-million chance. And look where it got us? Okay, bad example, we're here too. But no, good example. We're not just here, we're here. And everything we've done, tried, and care about is here too. Flying aliens, with very stinky farts, got on ships to rescue me from being eaten or enslaved by some pretty scary looking giant space lizards. And what's the first thing they asked me? You know, once I got done puking in their airlock? Who won the last World Series? Back at the refugee center, I met my first Skanen on a work shift. 
there I am, little old me, pulverizing rock to make room for more refugees to have room to live, and on my rest breaks, I'm sharing a canteen with what is basically a cricket lobster alien. And while this seven-foot-tall, six-limbed bug guy is sharing his water with me, what's he asking? Do I like classic movies like Quentin Tarantino and Taika Waititi? We're not just here, guys. We're baked in here. Trillions of aliens, half a dozen species, and you all speak English. Yeah, you bust my chops in the comments about it being the easiest language for all of your different talky parts to use, but I see the quotes in your message signatures. You're geeks. You're film buffs. Admit it, Far Lost. You like us humans a lot. And no, Mile High Manta Lovin', that most definitely isn't me changing my answer. Not ready to float away with you anytime soon, so keep it in your... Uh, I don't want to know where you keep it. Serena, we've got an airlock that needs your special touch. And there's my signal to wrap up Coping Diary 16, with me being a working stiff now. So, so let me leave you with this. Yes, haha, ha, you're right about all the easy hits, guys, girls, and sentience. Humans reproduce like rabbits. Humans suck at speaking your language. Maybe we do stink. I don't know, my nose is only human. I got a contract offer from Martel. All y'all are flaming each other in, that's right, the comment section of another human woman's channel. So just admit it, Far Lost. Admit the most important thing I've learned. The one thing that kept me from going full on something something when the bright spear dumped me in a whole new world with delightful monsters fighting for the privilege of eating me. You're glad to see us. You like us. You do. You love a stinky, breeding, opinionated, clever nut job humans. And with that, I'm off to unstick a door. Stay tuned for CD 17, in which I think I'll regale you with another installment of Alien Food Serena's Tommy Votes Against. You'll get to vote on the next game you want to see me run through like a boss, and, more than likely, I'll tell you another story about Mom, or Katya, or KFC. It really depends on my mood. <sighs> Thanks for being here, subscribers. You're keeping me sane, and you're paying for my access to the nets. How else am I going to catch up on a few thousand years of alien history and, you know, pay the bills? <sighs> Sometimes I think you're crazy for signing up to listen to the rants of another human refugee, even if I do speak better English than most of my crewmates. And hey, I am hella funny, am I right? Other times I feel like this, talking to you here in Far Lost, is right where I'm supposed to be. But mostly, I'm just glad you're out there listening. Until next time, keep it real, Far Losters. Serena out.